Hello, my name is Luis Serrano and this is Serrano Academy and this video is about positional encoding in transformer models. So if you haven't, I recommend you to check out these videos about attention mechanisms and transformer models that describe the whole architecture of a transformer. In particular, in this video over here, I talk about the whole architecture, which I summarize like this. So there's a lot of moving parts. One of them is positional encoding. The role of positional encoding is to tell the transformer model what is the order that we're giving it. And why is this important? Well, let's say we tell the transformer the following sentence, no, it is good. And then we tell it the sentence, it is no good. These sentences have the exact same words. However, they have completely opposite meanings. And the transformer needs to know that they're different. So what is the first thing a transformer does? Well, it puts them into embeddings. I'm going to show the embeddings here as two dimensionals, meaning that each word gets sent to a pair of numbers and the pair of numbers are the horizontal and the vertical coordinate here. In general, embeddings have a lot of dimensions, which means that each word gets sent to a long vector of many numbers, could be 500, could be a thousand or even more. But for illustration purposes, we're going to do them in two dimension. Now, when the transformer sees these two sentences, it sees the exact same thing because as you can see, the same four points in the plane get sent to the transformer. So we need to change this. And what we're going to do is something that at first looks sloppy, but then it's going to make sense. What we're going to do is we're going to move each one of these words in some direction. So for example, we are going to move the first word to the right, the second one up, the third one to the left, and the fourth one down. Now, why does this make a difference? Because when we do the exact same thing for the second sentence, now, things get changed because as you can see in the left, no gets moved to the right, the first word, whereas in the right, the word it gets moved to the right. So at least it's going to tell them apart. Let's do that. So when we move the words in the right and the words in the left based on their directions, then on the left, we get this and on the right, we get this, which at the very least, it's different. The model still doesn't know what each thing is, but at the very least, we've been able to tell them apart. And so where is the magic happening? How do we tell the computer what's the actual order? Well, here's the thing. As long as I pick a sequence that is easy for the model to learn. For example, this one in the right that goes right up, left down, right up, left down, etc. Then during training, the model will learn this because it ceases so much and it'll be able to reverse engineer it. So the good news is we only need to have a consistent way of changing the words. And if it's consistent, then the model will somehow learn it. Sometimes you gotta have a bit of faith in neural networks, but it turns out that we've seen in the practice that if you give it a good sequence of moves, the model will learn it. Now this sequence is no good because it repeats itself pretty quickly. So the fifth word will get sent to the same thing as the first word, and that's not good. So we'll fix that in a minute. But for now, let's do a slightly more general case. Let's say that I'm gonna move the first word to the right, and I'm gonna pick an angle and I'm gonna move the second word in that angle, and then I'm gonna rotate the same amount and move the third word in that direction, and then the same thing for the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, et cetera, et cetera. The problem is no matter how small I make this angle, eventually I will go back and start moving, let's say the 100th word in a very similar way as the first word, and I don't want that. But before we fix that, let's take a look at this in a slightly different way using sines and cosines. So I'm gonna draw a sine and a cosine over here. And now I'm gonna draw a line at zero. I'm gonna call that first word. And that hits the sine in one point and the cosine in another point. Now I'm gonna put the second word over here and that hits the sine and cosine at two points. Same thing for the third word. I make sure I space them the same amount between first and second and second and third. And then I do the same thing for the fourth and so on and so forth. Now these will tell me the directions in which I'm moving the words because the first word gets moved in these coordinates that is exactly to the right. The second word gets moved in these two coordinates that means at an angle. The third word gets moved at these coordinates here that means twice the angle. And for the fourth, it's gonna be three times the angle and so on and so forth. And the reason is that if I rotate a vector of the same size, an amount, and it's always the same amount about the origin, then the horizontal and vertical coordinates can be plotted in a sine and a cosine curve at equally spaced intervals. And so two questions arise. How do you make sure that this doesn't repeat? And also, 
what happens if the embedding has a lot more numbers because we're thinking about an embedding with two numbers. So let's do a slightly bigger one. Let's take an embedding of size six. That means that each word gets sent to six numbers. So I'm going to draw another curve, but I'm not going to draw sine and cosine. I'm going to take sine and cosine and stretch them horizontally. And I'm going to draw these two curves. And then I'm going to put a third one on the bottom and it's going to be stretched even more. And you can see what happens if I keep going. I will always stretch it more and more and more to the right. I'm going to play the same game. I'm going to look at the intersections of each horizontal line with all these sines and cosines that are stretched. And that's what I'm going to do to move each one of the words. So when I have the sentence, no, it is good. Now each word goes to six numbers because the embedding has six dimensions. And so to the first word, I'm going to add this vector over here. That means I'm going to move it in this direction in six dimensional space. For the second word, I'm going to add the vector corresponding to the six numbers. And then for the third word, and then for the fourth word. Now I do the exact same thing for the second sentence. I'm going to move each one of the words in a certain direction given by these six numbers of intersection. But of course, I have moved the first word in the same way, the second word in the same way, etc. Which means that these sentences will be modified in different ways. As you can see, for example, the word no is the first in one sentence and the third in another sentence, so it gets moved differently. As a matter of fact, these words become different and the fourth one becomes the same because the word good is the fourth word in both sentences, but there's nothing we can do about that. So now that we have this image in our heads, let's look at some formulas. These are the formulas for positional encoding and many times you'll find these sine and cosine flipped. It doesn't really make a difference. So I have the cosine on the first one and the sine on the second one. And they look complicated, but as soon as I tell you what each one of these things mean, I think it'll become more clear. So let's look at a more general case. Let's say that the embeddings have a lot of dimensions. So each word gets sent to a long, long vector, a long list of numbers. Well, in these formulas, position means the position of the word in the sentence. So it's going to be zero for the first word, one for the second word, two for the third word, three for the fourth word, etc. There's also a D. That is the number of dimensions, so the length of each vector. If our vectors are of length 1024, then D is 1024. Now the I is the position of the entry in the embedding that we're going to modify. So the even ones get modified using the green formula, which is cosine of position over 10,000 to the 2i over D. And the odd ones are going to get modified by this other formula over here using the sine. And why is that 10,000 there? Because that number is going to make sure that the sequence is going to take a long, long, long time to start giving us the same numbers again, which means that for some big, big number n, the nth word will get modified the same amount as the first word, but that doesn't matter as long as you make sure that n is much bigger than the context window of a transformer, which is the number of words that fit in the input. And when I say words, I mean tokens, but for this case, the difference is not very much. But let me get into this formula again. So here we have something with cosine and something with sine. Let's say that i equals zero. That tells us how much we're going to modify the first and second entries in the embedding. Well, they get modified by cosine and sine. Because if we left i equals zero, then that 10,000 to the i becomes one. And so we simply get cosine of position and sine of position. If we let i equals one, then we have cosine of position divided by a big number and sine of position divided by a big number. That means that the sine and cosine get stretched horizontally. For i equals two, the number we're dividing is even bigger. So the sine and cosine get stretched even more and so on and so forth. So if we have a very, very, very large embedding, everything gets modified, but the last numbers in the embedding are going to get modified in a very similar way. And the first numbers in the embedding are going to change a lot. But the moral of this story is as long as you get a good sequence, you can modify the words based on that sequence and the computer will learn it. If you remember that, then you know positional encoding. It could be that in the future, scientists will use different formulas, not using cosine and sine. Even now they already use some different formulas. So the formula is not the important part. The important part is to remember that if you modify each word in a different way using a sequence that makes sense and is easy for the computer to learn, then you have done positional encoding. So that's all folks. Thank you very much for your attention. 
As usual, if you like this video, please subscribe, hit like, share amongst your friends and put a comment. You can also become a member of my channel hitting that join button and you will get special perks like early access to videos or live Q&A chats with me. You can also support me on Patreon. You can also check out my page, Serrano.academy, tweet at me at Serrano Academy. And if you like, you can also check out my book, Rocking Machine Learning. There's a discount code in the description of this video. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.